But God bless you. Thank you for listening today. Yes, my next guest grew up as, he describes himself um, as an average boy in an average American neighborhood, Zachary King. He grew up in a Baptist home, a Southern Baptist home. But he began practicing magic, magic at the age of 10. He joined a satanic coven at the age of 13. By the age of 15, he was immersed in dark wickedness. From his teenage years to his adulthood, he worked his way up and became high wizard in the coven and actively pushed Satan's agenda, including ritualistic abortions. Yes, you heard that right. I'm going to get him to talk to you about it. And including infiltrating and breaking up churches. Some of you Christians that are still scratching your head wondering what in the heck happened in your church and to your pastor and to the leaders of your church and through the leaders of your church in some cases, you're going to hear Zach tell you what's happened. He was involved in infiltrating and busting up churches. He attended Bohemian Grove over 15 times. Most of our listeners know what that is, but if you don't, he'll tell you in a few moments. Some of them by special invitation. But then in 2008, just seven years ago in a shopping mall, he had a life-changing experience, gave his life to Jesus Christ. Gloriously born again, saved. After 26 years in the occult, the Church of Satan, if you will, Zachary became a warrior for Christ. And he shares his knowledge for the protection of God's people all over the place. I've seen him on TV. You've probably seen him on TV. You've heard him on radio broadcast. Today he's with us on Freedom Friday. His website is allsaintsministry.org. Allsaintsministry.org. Zachary King, welcome to Freedom Friday and the Freedom Friday audience. Carl, it's awesome to be here. Thank well, you very much. It, it's great to have you, and I know that Brandon Big B uh, had a lot of time with you and uh, did a pre-interview with, pre-interview with you several weeks ago, and he just ranted and raved, and he says, man, you got to get this guy on Freedom Friday. And, of course, I knew about you and had done some more reading about you, uh, knew that uh, it, uh, from, from everything we could read and, and research, you, you're a for real guy, you really love Jesus, you really were involved in all this nastiness, and you've got a lot to say, you're exposing a lot, I'm sure, at your own spirit spiritual risk and maybe even your own physical risk as well. Well, Satan's always, you know, upset and rants and raves when you put him in a leg lock and pull him out into the light. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No doubt about that, brother. I was a cop for 10 years, and then I've been in, well, I was in law enforcement for 10 years. I was a patrol uh, officer for seven or eight of those years, and and then uh, I've I've been a pastor for over 30 years, and and good gosh, I mean, I've battled it all. I mean, mean, we had to literally, we had some people sent from a witch coven to our church, and we actually had to stop the service and arrest the people and, and, and put them out of the service. I mean, I've battled free masonry at the national level at the local level it's infiltration into the churches by the way we were talking off air before we get into the ritualistic abortions and all of that uh, tell the folks what you were telling me off air about freemasonry and your involvement in that in in southern baptist churches and in and in the satanic covens i think this would be very informative for them to hear this and it might even help uh, somebody listening today to get out of that mess if they're in it well for the people that don't know uh freemasons hate Christians, and their their organization is vastly anti-Christian. Um, in a in a very simple um, way of understanding it, to like really dumb it down, and that's, I, I appreciate people that dumb things down because I say I'm not all that smart. So, <laughs> uh, you know, if I can get a simple version, that's what I want. So, in the early levels of Freemasonry, you swear allegiances to Jesus, and everybody at the lower levels thinks, "Oh, this is a great organization to right. swear allegiance to Jesus," but then. As you go up, they have you swear allegiances to crazy things, like you know, swear allegiance to a straw or a piece of paper, and you're never going to um, do anything to that straw or that piece of paper that could cause it any harm whatsoever, and you're going to honor it for the rest of your life. Then they have you cut it up, burn it, and, and you swear all these things on penalty of death. And after you do a bunch of those, and they water down what the oath means, and it means nothing to you, then you start doing Luciferian oaths, Yes. And when you're a 33rd degree Mason, they have you curse your entire line from you forward. Yeah. But this doesn't mean anything to you because you just swore an oath to your sandwich and to your straw and to your Coke bottle. Right. So, you know, that didn't mean anything either to this. So I was involved in a satanic coven. As, as you mentioned, I joined officially when I was 13. Well, in my coven, there's about 120 members, which is 
pretty large for a satanic coven, mm-hmm. and, and n- not by far the largest that I've been in. But um, of my coven, I had we had a pretty big Southern Baptist church, mm-hmm. and there was probably I'm going to guess about 15 deacons, mm-hmm. and all but one of them were members of my satanic coven. Mm-hmm. Also, all but one of them, same one, were was a member of the Freemasons. Right. Now, when I turned 18, they tried to get me to join the Freemasons. Mm-hmm. Now, had they told me it was a satanic organization, I'd have probably joined. Mm-hmm. But they didn't say that. They just said, you know, it, it's a fun, you know, like boys club, come on in and right. you'll have a great time. Right. I was already having a great time in my satanic coven and didn't see a reason to join that too. Had I joined that, then I'd have an even better story to tell you. Right. About my life, right, I'm sure right. I would have been thirty-third well, degree. Well, Z- Zachary, first of all, thank you for vindicating me. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it's not all about me, but thank you for vindicating me because, as a pastor for many years, dealing with this at the local level, at the regional level, and at the national level, literally at the national level, Southern Baptist. Listen, I was written up in the Freemason Monitor. I mean, they they just they lamb blasted me, and it went around the nation in their magazine. I've, I I had people that uh, I had one guy that was a oh uh, what a, a home repair guy and, and and a business, and he owned a business, and they and they uh, the local Mason Lodge had him doing some work inside, not knowing, of course, the guy was a member of my church and 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 knew everything I was teaching on this and exposing. And he picked up a, a a magazine laying there on the counter, but. If, and it was a national magazine because it said something about a pastor that was, quote, attacking Masons. And there was my name. And, I mean, they blasted me all over the nation. So, yeah, I've been extremely involved in this. And you and I both, neither one of us are saying that all Masons are also involved in Satanic covens. And we're not right. saying that everybody who's in a Satanic coven is in the Masons. But the two often go hand in hand, and it, they often go hand in hand with leadership positions in churches. And this is what I've been screaming for years and telling pastors. You better deal with this, or you're going to have a you're going to have the Church of Satan inside your church operating in positions of leadership. Am I right, Zachary? You are exactly right. Congratulations for for, for doing that work and for getting it accomplished. And yeah, I, mean, I know that it's not totally accomplished, but you know, congratulations on at least getting the ball rolling. Thank you. I, Thank I have a my, one of my badges of honor. We have what's called a curriculum vitae, and it it's like a resume for Catholics or for speakers, and. Uh, I, uh, in 2013, I was banned by the Freemasons from speaking in Medford, Wisconsin. Uh huh. And I actually put that on my resume. Wow. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's a, wear that like a badge of honor, brother. Listen, we've I, got, I do. we've got to take a quick time. Okay, my guest is Zachary King, who at the age of 13 joined a satanic coven. Eventually, in his adulthood, became a high wizard in the coven. And, uh, actually went to Bohemian Grove over 15 times and, participated in ritualistic abortions, participated in infiltrating and breaking up churches. Zachary, thanks so much for being a part of the show today. Zachary, of course, now is a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. His website is allsaintsministry.org, and he's exposing this demonic spirit that is sweeping our nation, sweeping our churches. And now talk to us, Zachary. I'm going to hush. People want to hear from you. Tell us about this ritualistic abortion deal, how that ties into the abortion industry today, and uh, and anything else that you, you, you want to tell this audience. The abortion industry is so vile, and uh, you know it, it, it's just no coincidence that the, the country is like just seemingly just swirling just in the cesspool. You know, we're just waiting for that final flush before we just go down. You know, and, and abortion is one of the major pushes towards that. Yeah. Um, it's almost like where to begin. Um, at my first abortion that I helped participate in, um, when I was 14 years old, the coven came to me and said, uh, we want you to participate in an orgy where there'll be um, males between 12 and 15, and they'll be with a woman that's over 18. And your purpose is to impregnate this woman and we're going to abort her child in eight or nine months. And I thought, you know, they mentioned an abortion to me, and I thought, cool. Well, I said cool out loud, and then I went home and thought, i got to look up this word because I don't have any idea what that is. And I remember my parents whispering the word abortion, so I thought it was a dirty word. Uh-huh. Looked it up in the dictionary, you know, and, and it's like no help. So I went to the library. There's these huge 500-page books on abortion. I'm like, 
you know, I'm 14 years old. I'm not reading that to find out what abortion is. So I went back to my coven, you know, and I was like, um, hey, you know, I was told that I had to participate in this, but I don't know what this is, so what is that? And they're like, oh, it, it's simple. You just kill a baby in the womb. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, is, is that legal? Oh, yeah, absolutely. As long as the baby's in the womb, you can kill it. If it comes outside, it's murder. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. So as long as it's in there, not a problem. So eight or nine months later, we're at a coven member's uh, farmhouse, that I got to tell you is more sterile than a lot of abortion clinics I've been in. Yeah, uh, we've got all the equipment there, medical equipment, uh, abortion doctor, nurse. The thirteen top members are surrounding this woman that's in stirrups. She's on a birthing bed. She's all ready to go. There's fifty nude women on the floor that are chanting and swaying our bodies ourselves. Mm-hmm. By the end of this procedure, they all look possessed. There's all the men in the room are in their robes and they're. Um, chanting and, and doing spell work. And my job, uh, I'm going to be the magic practitioner of what's happening, um, is to insert both of my hands into this woman with a scalpel. Um, my job's supposed to be to stab the baby. Just I just have to do it once. But I couldn't actually find the baby. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I, you know, when you, it's your first time, it, it's different than, <laughs> than what you're expecting. Yeah. So, but what you have to do is get blood on your hands. Right. And the woman's got plenty of blood, so I pulled out both my hands, and they're both covered in blood, and then the doctor finishes up the procedure, and it's a, a disgusting procedure, and the end result in that one was not only did we have a dead baby, but it was ripped apart, thrown to the women on the floor, and they cannibalized it. Oh, okay. Uh, that doesn't happen in all of them. But it, it happens at particular rituals. It happened in that one. In some of them, um, the participants drink the blood of the child. Sometimes they drink the blood of a woman. Right. Um, it just depends on what's required for your particular spell that you're doing. Right. Um, now, that spell is not, it is a special spell in that it is the strongest one in the Satanist arsenal. You know, if you have to pull out all the stops, then you absolutely need a bill to pass. Um, some huge construction project you want to have go forward, somebody you want to have become president or even further down, the, you know, mayor, mm-hmm. chief of police, something like that, mm-hmm. this is the spell they go for. Mm-hmm. Now, every these things happen every day. You know, from 1973 till now, just in America, we've had 53 million abortions. Right. Every night between midnight and 3 a.m., abortions are dedicated to Satan. Um, midnight is the witching hour. How so? Uh, three, how, how are they dedicated? What do you mean? They do an extended black mass. Mm-hmm. The, the, so the, the, the covens do? The covens do. They do, um, and usually it's not the entire coven. It's usually the, in particular satanic covens, they use the, the magic people in them to, to conduct them. Right. Because it's a magic spell. So while abortions are going on in America... A bunch of witches and, 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 and warlocks and magic practitioners are praying and, and dedicating these abortions to Satan. Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good to know. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. Keep going. And they do this. It's a, a regular black mass probably lasts, um, uh, you can probably blast one out in about 20 minutes, but they like to be a little theatrical, so they'll usually stretch it out 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Um, uh, the black mass that happens during those events is three hours. Yeah. It goes from midnight to three. Three a.m. is, is the devil's hour. Yeah. And it is, it's a mockery of when it's believed Jesus died on the cross. Right. Of course. Three p.m. Of course. Of course. And that's what Satan does. Listen, we're running out of time. You've only got about a minute and a half. But let me say, one of the things that you really emphasize is that this practice of Satanism in this way, in this coven ritualistic way, that even small towns can have up to 100 practitioners. And you say they come from all strata of society. Uh, talk about that for just a moment before we have to go. Um, you know, yeah, my, my town that I grew up in had about four or 5,000 people. We got... Um, satanic people from all the neighboring towns, and we had 120 members in our coven. When I would moved up to a bigger city and went to a university, I joined a coven there that worldwide has, has worldwide ties and has 1.1 million members. Uh-huh. If I could stress anything during this call, I know I have like you know just a few seconds to go. 
It's that abortion is spiritual warfare. Yeah. Do not think that we will change a law and that will instantly eliminate abortion. And do not think that we can send enough people to Washington to march in January. Right. And that will attract somebody's attention and they'll change the law. Right. It right. is spiritual warfare. Thank Satan you. doesn't send very many people and we send way too many. Thank you. And we don't realize that it's spiritual warfare and not a physical battle. Thank you. That's a good word. Good word. Listen, I, I looked at the clock wrong. We actually right now have about 45 seconds. So you went to 15 Bohemian Groves, this demonic, ritualistic, satanic meeting of, of, of powers in the United States. And you saw at one of these meetings a man that was introduced to you as a future president of the United States. Uh, tell the folks about that and who that guy was. Um, my group was walking through a field. Uh, this guy was on an intersect course with us, which is negative for anybody to be on an intersect course with the high wizard. Right. Uh, if, if you don't have an appointment, this could be a death sentence for you. Right. Um, you the got about, about 15 seconds. The guy that was leading, Alex stopped me, showed me some guy. This guy walked past, and he said, that man's going to be president one day. And I looked and thought, this is, you know, in the 90s, I was like, oh, you know, we're never going to elect a black president. <laughs> and uh, we did. We elected, we elected him twice. Yeah, yep. So it was Barack Obama in the 1990s at Bohemian Grove, and he was. We were. You were told then he's going to be president of the United States at a demonic, ritualistic uh, uh, meeting.